Hello everyone, welcome on in to this video where we'll talk about some trivia from the original Gran Turismo on the PlayStation 1. Ranging from fairly interesting all the way up to pretty damn interesting. But to do this, I have enlisted some help from a fellow YouTuber. So I'd like to introduce Ruffle Waffle, who will be narrating this video for us with me. I hope you enjoy watching. Hey guys, this is Ruffle Waffle. I make video essays and retrospectives about racing games, mostly Gran Turismo. I'll be joining Matt today as we dive into some trivia about GT1. Well, let's get going. Starting at the fairly interesting end of the scale, we have the first screen from the intro movie. On the original Japanese version of the game, the intro screen with the trees in the background is actually lighter than it is on the versions of the game sold in North America and Europe. In a sense, it seems like a strange decision to make, given that the next scenes in the movie are set at either sunrise or sunset, and match the lighting scene on the Japanese intro a lot better. Sticking with the regional differences, the font on the HUD during races was changed between versions as well. While we won't be going through every single regional difference in this video, there will be a few more to look forward to later down the line. And here's another. On arcade mode, the wording for the difficulties was also changed. On the Japanese version, the toughest difficulty was called hard, whereas it was changed to difficult on the overseas releases. There are various championships within Gran Turismo, and you receive prize cards for all but one of these, the GT World Championship, where you receive the ending movie and access to GT Hi-Fi. However, when you complete certain events, you will receive a trophy, followed by the Get the New Machine screen indicating that there's a prize car waiting for you in the home garage. With other championships, they will end abruptly and you won't receive any kind of notification about a prize car, even though you've still won one. When you go into time trial, you can see every track in the game, apart from a couple we'll discuss later. And you can also race them backwards too. Well, all except one. Test course. This is the only circuit in the game that cannot be driven in reverse. Maybe this is because it'd be too similar. Instead of going anti-clockwise, you'd be driving test course clockwise instead. Sticking with the theme of test course, this circuit only appears in one championship in the entire game, and it's race two of three in the Mega Speed Cup, which is a series reserved for some of the fastest, fully modified cars in Gran Turismo. Test course is a fitting location for them, the used car lots change after 10 in-game days have passed, so if you're looking for some of the rarer used cars like the R32 GTR Nismo or the GTO 95 MR, now you know when to check to see if the Gran Turismo gods have smiled on you. Grand Valley Speedway is the longest track in the game, at 4.96km in length. It narrowly beats Special Stage Route 11 to this title, which is 4.894km long. Only two cars are used throughout the International A license. They are the TVR Griffith and the Dodge Viper, which alternate through the tests. This seems like a world away from what we're used to now, where we have a different car for each individual test these days. The concept car is the only vehicle in the game that says not for sale in the dealership where it's on show. This is because it's a prize car and it's awarded for getting all golds on the B license. Of course, there are many other prize cars in the game that must be won, not bought but none of them are shown in their respective dealerships, just the concept car. There are some cars on the game with an MR drivetrain, such as the Toyota MR2, which are mid-engined and rear-wheel drive. And while there are championships for FF, FR and four-wheel drive cars, there is no championship specifically for MR cars. We would have to wait until the release of Gran Turismo 2 for that. Gran Turismo has been around for a long time now, We've had seven main instalments, plus some spin-off titles like Gran Turismo Concept. But have we ever taken a moment to consider what Gran Turismo actually means? It's an Italian phrase that means Grand Touring or just Grand Tour. It typically refers to a cultural tour of Europe, or more specifically, a vehicle that has been engineered for long, relaxing drives like these. The dealerships that are available on arcade mode at the beginning of the game are different between the Japanese and the US and European versions of Gran Turismo. On the Japanese version, we have Subaru, Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Mazda and Mitsubishi, whereas overseas we have Nissan, Honda, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Aston Martin and Chevrolet. Of course, the player must play through arcade mode to unlock the remainder of the dealers. 
On Gran Turismo mode, you can sell a car at any dealership, a feature which was removed in Gran Turismo 2. But despite being able to sell your car anywhere, if you sell it to the dealer who's the maker of your car, you will get a better price for it, so it's always best to do that. Most of the cars you drive on license tests are white. The only exceptions to these are vehicles that don't have a white colour scheme, such as the Dodge Viper or the Mazda RX-7RZ. However, there is one outlier. The Honda CRX Del Sol that features on the B license is silver, while the car does actually have a white colour scheme available. This is likely a leftover from earlier in development, where the car did not yet have a white colour scheme, just a silver one. Did you know that the game manual gives you information on eligible cars for the game's championships? This is particularly useful for the Lightweight Cup, where eligible cars are not immediately obvious. Looking at page 52 of our manual here, we can see all the cars that can compete. Or can we? The Mazda Demio A-Spec, which can be obtained by winning the Sunday Cup, is eligible for the Lightweight Cup, but is not included in the list of cars shown in the game's manual. This is likely just an oversight from the game's developers. And to complete a trio of facts about the Lightweight Cup, did you know that the prize car versions of the Honda CRX and the Mazda Unos Roadster aren't eligible for the tournament, even though they should be? The versions of the cars that can be purchased from their respective dealerships can be entered into the championship, so it's just their prize car counterparts that can't. Again, this is likely to just be an oversight from the game's developers. While you can complete a championship multiple times to win a prize car more than once, the same cannot be said for achieving gold on all the licenses, where you can only win each prize car once. Now this presents an issue because with the TRD3000 GT for example, there's the stock version of the car, and then it also has two colour schemes of its racing modification, making three versions of the car in total. And for the Nismo 400R, there are four stock colour schemes and two racing modifications. So if you want to collect all of them, what you can do is get all golds on each license test except one, copy that save onto a new memory card, then gold that last test to get the prize car, and then trade it to your main account. The Japanese version of Gran Turismo came out in December 1997, while the overseas ports didn't release until May 98. During that time, Chevrolet updated their branding and, as such, changed their logo. Therefore, the Chevrolet logo differs between the Japanese and overseas releases of the game. This can be seen in the game's menus and also on billboards around the circuit. Sticking with the theme of logos, on the Japanese and European releases of the game, we got the Chrysler dealership. However, the North American version of the game received the Dodge dealership instead. That means all the logos had to be changed between the various regions that the game was released in. And the game's creators messed up just one of them. There's a Dodge logo on the reverse version of Grand Valley Speedway on the European version of Gran Turismo. When it comes to selling cars, surely the better the car, the higher the resale price, right? Well, this is true for the cars that you purchase from the dealerships, but the prize cars actually all sell for the same amount, which is 12,000 credits at the maker's dealership and 10,000 credits elsewhere. No matter whether it's a licensed prize car, a Mazda Demio, or a Nissan GTR LM. On the Japanese version of the game, there are two additional Honda CRX Del Sols at the dealership. On the US and PAL versions, the only Del Sols you'll find are in the used Honda dealership, whereas these additional two can be found among the new models. There's the VGI and the SIR, and sadly, both have exactly the same racing modifications as the ones found in the used car lots, so you're not really missing out by not being able to access them overseas. The 1995 Nissan Primera that can be found at the Nissan dealership has two racing modifications. One with a red body and a green wing, and one with a green body and a red wing. The shade of red matches across the two variations. However, the green wing is a lighter shade than the green body on the other racing modification. So what's going on here? You might think it's nothing, but actually it harks back to an earlier stage of the game's development where the green variant was actually a lighter shade and matched the rear wing on the red racing modification. For some reason the body was changed, but the wing remained the same. Remember earlier in the video when I said that Time Trial doesn't actually show all of the tracks in the game? Well, that's because there are two tracks hidden among the game's files that were never intended to see the light of day. 
The first is a Rogo Test. I'm unsure why it's called this, but it's essentially a copy of Autumn Ring Mini, but with the reflections on the cars really dialed up to 11. The track's purpose is unknown, other than it being some form of reflections test. However, it's theorised that the reflections match those on the trophy shown on the championship winner screen. Also, the word Rogo is likely a typo of Logo. The second of these tracks is one called End. It's an anti-clockwise circle track with a little jump part of the way around. There is forest scenery around it and a big hole in the middle. Also, the skybox is adapted from Deep Forest, I believe. The purpose of this track is unknown, but its name indicates that it might have been intended for use in some kind of unused credit sequence. The Dodge Viper GTSR is one of the prize cars on the original Gran Turismo, and in my opinion, is one of the best all-round cars in the game. If we take a closer look at the model though, we can see that it has a sponsor beneath the American flag on the side of the car. This reads Tatol. This is actually a misspelling of Total, which is one of the sponsors on the real-life car that the in-game vehicle is inspired by, the Team Orica Viper from Le Mans in 1996. Well, it could have also been an intentional misspelling to avoid using the actual brand's name if they didn't have the license to do so. Chances are that if you're watching this video and you grew up with Gran Turismo, you may well have been playing either the North American or the European versions of the game. And while those versions of the game featured some absolute bangers at the dealership to accompany your car browsing, these songs weren't actually included in the original Japanese soundtrack for the game. No, the Japanese version featured an entirely different soundtrack for the menus, dealerships, races, everything. In fact, the original Japanese soundtrack for Gran Turismo 1 was remixed and reused in Gran Turismo 2 for all versions. So little did we know at the time that we were hearing music in Gran Turismo 2 that the Japanese players had already heard before. Did you know that GT1's Japanese soundtrack would also be remixed and used in Gran Turismo 4 as well? Songs like Take Your Dream On from the Aston Martin dealership, Mr. Four Wheel Drive from the Subaru dealership, From the East from Toyota's dealership, and Drift of Air from the Nissan dealership would all end up in some form as GT4's GT mode music.
when you go to a manufacturer's tuning shop, there are various ways to increase the brake horsepower of your car. In theory, one of these methods is by increasing the displacement of the engine, which can be found under NA tuning. However, this option never seems to be available. In fact, you can only increase the displacement of Nissan Skylines. No other car can have this upgrade. There is one exception to this rule though. The Nismo 400R cannot have this upgrade, despite essentially being a Nissan Skyline. On arcade mode, there are at least two exclusive cars to this mode of gameplay. The Chevrolet Corvette Stingray 42767 and the Mazda Yunus Roadster RS98. These two cars, however, only featured on the overseas releases of Gran Turismo. They were never present on the original Japanese version of the game. What's more, you can actually use cheat codes to add them to your garage in GT mode. But as they were never intended to be used in this mode of gameplay, you can't tune them at their respective dealerships. All you can do is just buy some different tyres. And there are in fact three exclusive cars in arcade mode, but the third flies completely under the radar. It's the other Yunos Roadster in the Mazda dealership. And you likely wouldn't realise it's an exclusive car, because you can purchase a Yunos Roadster just like it in Gran Turismo mode. In fact, there are multiple Yunos Roadsters available to buy. But again, if we add it to our garage using cheat codes, we can see that it's an exclusive car. It's named the Yunos Roadster Arcade. And like the other two cars, sadly it does not have any parts available to be fitted. If you've played Gran Turismo, you'll be familiar with how the game tracks time. It's tracked in days, and there's a counter in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. However, this wasn't always the case. Early on in development, the game's creators used seasons instead, and we can still see them here. There's spring, summer, fall, and winter. Still in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, and all presented in different colours. The Mazda Demio was one of the last cars in the game to have its racing modifications finished by the game's creators. We can see this by looking at earlier demos and builds sent to journalists to promote the game ahead of its release. Even at quite a late stage of development, the Demio's racing modifications were solid colours, with no decals or designs. In the descriptions for the FC generation of Mazda RX-7s, we can see a leftover icon from an earlier stage of the game's development. Instead of having an exit button in the top left, we have an exit door depicted instead. Interestingly, while the Japanese and North American versions of the game have the exit button, the European version still has the exit door depicted everywhere. On High Speed Ring, there is an advert for a made-up company called Bolland. It's theorised that this is adapted from the real-life company Benetton. The logos and branding are very similar to the Benetton branding at that time, and of course, GT's creators wouldn't be able to use the real-life brand unless they had paid for the rights to do so. There have been multiple demos released for the original Gran Turismo in Japan, the USA, and in Europe. One of the European demos that featured Gran Turismo is called Winter Releases 98. Within arcade mode, we can see a range of vehicles, some playable, some not. One of the cars that isn't playable is the Corvette 67, and we can tell that this car wasn't finished at this point in the game's development, as it only has one working colour scheme. If you scroll upwards to look at another colour scheme, you get this glitchy mess instead. On the original Gran Turismo, only the Japanese car dealerships have used car sections. The British and American dealers only have new cars available to buy. But at one point, would all of the dealerships ideally have had used car lots? Well, if we look at earlier builds of Gran Turismo, we can see that each of the American and British manufacturers had used car screens with artwork that's not found in the final game. However, you're not able to enter any of the used car lots. It could be the case that the developers wanted to add used cars for the other dealers, but ran out of time before the game was due to be released. On a couple of tests within the B license, there is a version of High Speed Ring set at sunset. Usually it's set in the daytime, so why is it different on the B license? Well, it's because High Speed Ring originally was set at sunset, and we can see this on the test drive demo disc that was released in Japan. So these two license tests were likely just an oversight. The creators probably just forgot to update them. There are several cars on Gran Turismo that should be four-wheel drive, but aren't. Several cars are marked as four-wheel drive in the game, 
but behaved like front-wheel drive cars, such as being prone to wheel spin. And the cars were not actually flagged to be four-wheel drive. These are the Nissan Pulsar GTI R, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 3, the Mitsubishi Galant VR4, and the Toyota Celica GT4. There's a great video on this by Submaniac93, which I will link in the video's description. We looked at the used car lots for American and British dealers that would go on to be unused in the final game, but I intentionally didn't show the TVR dealership in that section. That's because there's something different about it. The photo of the car that's used on this screen isn't a TVR at all. In fact, it's a Lotus Elise, which isn't a TVR and isn't even a car that features in the game at all. We'd have to wait until Gran Turismo 2 to drive an Elise for the first time. On the European version of the game, there is a language selection screen where you can choose from five languages. English, French, German, Italian and Spanish. However, there is actually a hidden sixth option, and that is American English. You can't see it on the menu, but as you can see here, it seems to be invisible and in the top left hand corner of the screen. As when I have a code activated to force the game to load US English, you can see something being highlighted up there. Anyway, so changing the language to US English has an interesting side effect. The Honda dealership changes name to Honda and Acura, which is normally only found on the American version of the game. However, it's just the nameplate that changes. The NSX LMGT2, for example, still has the Honda logo on it rather than Acura. The Chrysler dealership becomes the Dodge dealership as well, like it is on the American version of the game. On Gran Turismo Trial version, which is the later of two Japanese pre-release demo discs, there is a menu icon which goes unused in the final version of the game. It's in the left-hand menu at the bottom and it looks like a person's face with a speech bubble. You can't interact with it, so I'm not sure what its purpose would have been. During the game's development, the section of Grand Valley Speedway that heads into a tunnel then onto the bridge was originally longer. I'm not sure why it was ultimately changed, but at least we can see the original version on the first demo of Gran Turismo ever to be released. Gran Turismo Test Drive Disc. Going back to the very early days of the game's development, the player could change the colour of the vehicles in the used car lot. On the final version of the game, the player can only change the colour of the vehicles in the new car lot. This feature was likely removed as it's unrealistic. If you're buying a used car, then the colour has already been chosen by the person who bought the car when it was new. Inside a file called GameMenu.dat, there exists a series of images and names of the game's circuits with their original names. Some are the same as on the final game, but others are different. Most notably, we can see that Grand Valley Speedway was originally called Prawn Speedway, and Grand Valley East was originally called Prawn Short. When the Test Drive demo disc was released in Japan, it came packaged with a booklet that listed all the cars that were slated to appear in the game. There was one interesting inclusion here, the Plymouth Prowler. Now, this car obviously never appeared in the final game, and there wasn't even a Plymouth dealership until Gran Turismo 2 came along. But at one point, the game's creators at least intended to place the Prowler in the original Gran Turismo. And last of all, we must discuss a feature that was first brought to the series in Gran Turismo 2, and that feature is the Wheel Shop. Yes, starting with GT2, you could change the wheels on your car. However, it was discovered that this feature was originally intended to be in Gran Turismo 1. On the Trial Version demo disc, the Wheel Shop is buried in the game's code and we can access it thanks to the use of cheat codes. It's partly functional. We can scroll through the wheels, but we can't equip them onto a car. Also, interacting with some of the functions in the wheel shop causes the game to crash. Wow, now that was a lot of trivia. Thanks again to Matt for having me on his channel, and hopefully you all enjoyed this blast from the past with GT1. If you're looking for more in-depth Gran Turismo content, then feel free to check out my channel, which will be linked in the description. But until then, have a good one.